You guys, this is the last video that you have to watch for me. Oh my gosh. Are you sad? Elated? Bewildered? <laughs> anyway, let's get right to it because I know you're anxious to practice the product and power property put together. Okay? Okay. Real quick. Let's just talk about it. So remember, if I have two numbers and I'm multiplying them together and they have the same base, what do I do with their exponents? I add them. So that's going to get me x to the fifth. If I take a power and I raise it to another power, that's when I'm going to multiply those together. So that's what we've talked about in the last two lessons. Okay, so now we're going to kind of try and just um, try mixing them together, seeing what's going to happen when I do something like this. What if I had like 2x times 3x squared squared, something like that right? It looks super intimidating. It's not. It's not. Don't worry. First of all, we have Aunt Sally to help us. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, PEMDAS, right? So you always follow order of operations no matter what. Parentheses. Yes, I do have parentheses. There's nothing to actually do inside those parentheses, so I'm actually done there. But then I do have exponents to worry about. I have to do this exponent part next. Okay, so since I'm raising something to an exponent, I have to simplify that out as my next step. So this next part would look like 2x, and then I'd have 3 squared, which is just 9, right? And then it would be x to the 4th, because I'm raising a power to a power. So that would be x to the 4th. So there's me using that power property. Now I'm going to go ahead and use that product property when I simplify this. So let's multiply the numbers. I'd have two times nine, that's just 18. And then what would x times x to the fourth be? That would get me x to the fifth, right? Because remember, there's really a one on that x that we never write. And then one plus four gets me the five. So there would be my final answer. Okay, so that's all we're doing today. We're going to try and put these together and practice a couple of problems like this, okay? So let's check a few out, see what happens. Okay, number one, already we're starting off with a curveball. Oh my gosh, something is being raised to zero power. Here's a very, very common mistake. A lot of times kids see this and they're like, oh, anything to the zero power is just one. I'm just gonna cross it out. And they do this, this is wrong, don't do this. They do this. Why is that wrong? That's wrong because the two isn't being raised to the zero power at all. It's just a two, right? It's just hanging out there minding its own business. It's the K that's being raised to the zero power, not the two. If I want to raise both a, a two and a K to the zero power, it would have to be written like that. And it's not, right? So it's only the K that goes away, not the two, just the K. The two is still there, okay? Very common mistake. So I like to start off by eliminating anything. So I'm just, just a number three. It's just jumping out at me. I can just cross that off. So if I have a variable raised to the zero power or a number raised to the zero power, it's just a one. So I really don't have to deal with it, okay? So now I'm going to use that power property. I'm going to give everybody that exponent of four. So that's really going to be two to the fourth k to the eighth. Okay, and yes, we should do a 2 to the 4th because it's not that big. It's just 16. So there's my final answer, 16k to the 8th. Let's go ahead and finish 3 since we started it. I'm going to multiply my numbers together. 2 times 2 is just 4. And then p to the 1st times p to the 1st would just be p to the 2nd. Because you have one there and one there. One plus one is two. All right. Let's try some more. These are fun. Uh, oh, two is nice and easy. Everything's being raised to zero power. 
everything. So the answer to number two is just one, right? All of this, that becomes x to the zero, that becomes two to the zero, that becomes x to the zero. So they're all ones. One times one times one is just one. Just one. Ah, oh, I love those ones. Huh? Okay, let's try four since it's on my screen, right? So let's do that exponent first. Two to the second power is just four. V, if I raise, if I have V to the fourth and I square it, I now get V to the eighth. And then you still have this V. Okay, so put that all together. That would be four V to the ninth. Because remember, there's that invisible one there. Okay, so see how we're just seamlessly putting together the, the product and the power properties? Oh my gosh, so fun. Uh, let's try, um, Hey, let's try nine. That looks a little intimidating. There's a lot going on here. So nine, start with the exponent. Give those exponents. So that'd be two to the fourth, which is just four. P to the eighth. I still have this P to the third. So now I can just combine these two. P to the eighth and P to the third. Put those together. That gets me P to the eleventh. Are you getting the hang of these? I hope so. So remember, if I'm raising the power to a power, that's when I multiply. If I'm, I know it's it, like right here, this is where kids get confused because they're multiplying the two numbers, but it means to add the exponents. And I know you feel like you see a multiplication die. You feel like you should be doing eight times three. No, 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 no. You don't. And remember why that was, because P to the eighth is really one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times p to the third. One, two, three. Isn't that just p to the eleventh altogether? That's why this works the way it does. Okay, it doesn't mean to multiply the exponents. The only time I multiply those exponents is when I do this, when I raise the power to another power. All right, I know it can get confusing, but I promise the more you practice, the better you get at these. Uh, let's do 11 and 13 and then I'll leave the rest for you. So 11, we'll do the exponent. So two to the third is actually just eight, right? Two times two times two. And then x to the, if I have x squared and I raise it to the third, that's x to the sixth. Then I just have that times x there. So that'll be eight x to the seventh. Yay. And 13, last one of the last video. Oh my gosh, this isn't the last assignment, but your, your remaining assignments don't have videos for me. That's just, um, it's kind of fun things for you to do. I hope you like them. Anyway, so this one I did m to the third raised to the second power that got me m to the sixth. So now let's just put these all together. So that'd be two m to the, did you say 10? Look at you, so good. And there's my answer. Guys, that's it. Okay? If you are still listening, I am so proud of you. You worked so hard. You did. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just so happy. If you actually listen to this, I kind of want you to just send me an email and tell me that you did. Because I feel like a lot of kids aren't, you know. Maybe they watch the first minute or two, they get the gist and then they move on. But if you are sticking with me to the end, I am just so proud of you. I'm sorry that things turned out the way that they did this year. Um, I hope very much to see you all in the fall. Um, please feel free to reach out if you need anything, even over the summer. I do check my email still. I mean, not maybe not every day, but uh, I will here and there so if you do need something please reach out and if you you know you can reach out to anybody not just me but i hope you have an awesome 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 summer and i hope to see you all in the fall okay guys thanks for sticking it out with me bye